You're watching Newsline, an RMI TV student production. A story about beer will probably have you thinking more boonie and bogans than boutique brews. But over the last decade, microbreweries have become more popular, with drinkers looking for a different experience. Despite increasing sales, small-time brewers say they are struggling to make ends meet. They've been lobbying the federal government to introduce tax concessions that would help them compete with the big players in the market. Thomas Keane reports. You could be forgiven for thinking there were only a few beers available at your local bottle shop. But smaller brewers, known as microbreweries, have never been more popular with drinkers. Buckley's Beer in Healesville is just one of the many new names in the microbrewing industry. We're traditional brewers. We're, this is our fifth year now. Uh, we believe in uh, natural, pro natural products and natural uh, uh, brew systems. We don't add any preservatives or uh, uh, filtration systems. Natural, full-bodied, full-flavoured beer. While becoming increasingly popular, microbreweries still produce just 1% of Australia's beer and most struggle to survive. This inspired the name Buckley's, a reference to escaped convict William Buckley. Five years ago we were trying to work out a name for the, for the beer. We had Yarra Flats Brewery, but uh, we were trying to work out a name for the beer. And uh, two o'clock in the morning we said, oh, we've got Buckley's chance. We think we've, we've named our beer after William Buckley, having been uh, uh, predated by, by 302 odd uh, attempts at uh, uh, brewing in the past. If we named it after William, we, we uh, We've got a chance of surviving. Transport at Federation Square is a big supporter of local microbreweries like Buckley's. Something different and um, we're trying to encourage people to try different things and the microbreweries are a great way to do it because they craft brewers, they spend a lot of time perfecting their beer so it's not mainstream, it doesn't, it's not processed overly quick so it's actually uh, putting out some better products. And it seems punters like what they're tasting. Definitely more flavour and taste, uh, you know, with the microbreweries, there's definitely that they employ uh, top brewers, uh, they are specialists in their field, it's a bit more of um, an art, I think, um, and they do offer something unique from a, a taste perspective, certainly, yeah. But making a good beer is not the hard part, says the Victorian Association of Microbreweries. It's incredibly hard to, to even start because um, the, the capital required is, is huge, stainless steel costs the earth. Um, but getting a foothold in the industry is extremely difficult because it's an industry dominated by two major players that have um, been operating for, you know, for decades. The main gripe of small brewers isn't with their competitors, but with the federal government and the tax office. We've got all the other you know, challenges of a small business, um, but, but then 25% of our turnover is taken straight out and goes to the ATO in the form of excise tax. Paul Holgate from Holgate's Brewhouse says this level of tax is a major burden. I don't know of any other small business that, are, that are, has a sales revenue, say, between $300,000, $1.5 million per annum, that would be able to survive if, on top of um, GST, company tax and all the other taxes, they had to put 25 to 30% of their sales revenue into excise tax. BAMI has been lobbying Canberra for tax concessions similar to those that the wine industry receives, where all producers get a rebate on the first $500,000 of excise tax paid. This has meant that about 90% of wineries pay no excise tax at all. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, run, run. Don't give the farmer his fun, fun, fun. Small wineries have made a big contribution to regional tourism. Federal Minister for Small Business and Tourism, Fran Bailey, says with the help of excise concessions, microbreweries could... The microbrewers are already an important part of regional tourism, so the stronger that we can make the microbrewery sector, the stronger we can make the regional tourism sector. It is not fair for the microbrewers to be paying the same rate of excise on their product as the, the big brewers like Carlton United. Microbrewers were hopeful that the May budget would have included the tax concessions, but for them there was no good news this year. 
we were disappointed that uh, we didn't get a reduction in excise in the budget this week, but we're continuing. We, we haven't given up the fight. And if the industry doesn't get reductions in excise, Vami says some brewers may be forced to close. The industry will be crippled. It would be a real shame because we're starting to see quite a few startups now, but they're not surging forward. Um, and it's likely that there'd be a rationalisation pretty quickly and, and I don't think we'd get much above one or one and a half percent of the market, which would be a great opportunity lost. But at Buckley's Beer, John still thinks microbrewers have a chance of surviving in the future. But only if punters embrace their brews more than the government has. There's a lot of beer drinkers out there and all they need to do is, is uh, follow their palate and, and realise that there's a, a lot more flavour to be had out there than, than, than perhaps what they're used to. Thomas Keane, Newsline.